Welcome. Glad you're joining us. Empowering students using a self-management skill approach to social emotional learning. My name is Dolly Lambden and I'm a retired physical educator and teacher educator who feels passionately about empowering students by helping them develop skills, knowledge, and desire to be physically active for a lifetime. I'm here with Dr. Chuck Corbin, Professor Emeritus at Arizona State University, who I believe to be the father of fitness education. He has spent his entire career developing programs and doing research on helping students develop the skills they need to be active for life, and has been the lead author for Fitness for Life curriculum materials for college, high school, middle school, and elementary school. Next slide. So let's just wait for a minute and think about why you're here. Were you excited about the empowerment as much as we are? Were you, are you somebody who's really into SEL or you don't know much about it yet and you really want some more help? Think about that as we go through our slides um, so that you can get the most out of it for what you want. Next slide. So our objectives for today, we want first to define some key terms. Um, Next, we'll describe a variety of self-management skills and explain how they're related to student empowerment and SEL. We'll describe a variety of SEL competencies that can be developed in conceptual physical education. And we'll use some scenarios to guide student discussions to promote SEL. Next. So about definitions. I'll try to make sure we're all on the same page by reviewing the whole school, whole child, whole community model known as WISC and the social emotional learning model developed by Castle. A little later, Chuck will define fitness education and conceptual physical education. Next slide. First, the WISC model, developed by the Center for Disease Control. Haven't we heard a lot about them recently? CDC and the Association for Curriculum, Supervision Curriculum Development. Uh, together worked on this model. It's exciting to me that it didn't come just out of physical education, but came from everyone thinking that physical education, health education, and many other pieces contribute to the whole child. There are 10 different areas, all contributing to blue boxes, that contribute to coordinating policies, processes, and practice that will lead to helping kids become healthy, safe, engaged, supported, and challenged. And it's actually the center that we're gonna focus on today, the idea of having students safe, healthy, supported, engaged, and challenged only comes by us empowering them. We'll focus on the center definition as we go through today. Next slide. Which brings us to the social emotional learning model developed by Castle in the collaborative for academic social emotional learning. This model identifies five categories, social emotional learning skills to be developed through classrooms, schools, homes, and communities. Five categories are self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and responsible decision-making. Now, this is not the way we've organized social emotional learning and physical education, where we focused on things like leadership, followership, sportsmanship, self-assessment, and goal setting. But it is a useful new tool for thinking about skills needed to develop a lifetime of enjoyment and commitment to fitness and physical activity. These skills are helpful actually essential in developing empowered, successful learners. Next slide. So what is social emotional learning all about? Again, it's a process through which children and adults understand and manage emotions in all aspects of their self. That's the self-awareness. They set and achieve positive goals, self-management. They feel and show empathy for others, social awareness. They can establish and maintain professional positive relationships, relationship skills, and making responsible decisions, just what it says. These are the five areas that Castle defines. Next. Early physical education leaders had me medical and health focus, but PE was formal exercise. I'm sorry. Early physical education leaders had medical and health focus for PE and use formal exercise with names like physical training and physical culture. Did focus, however, on caring about your body. So even the earliest had some self-awareness and self-management skills. Next. These leaders focused on formal exercise, but also included self-awareness and character training. Next. 
At the turn of the century, new physical education came into focus, with these people leading the way. Sports emerged, included sportsmanship development and social values, which were now important. Nash advocated play as opposed to formal exercise, which brought in some aspects of relationship building as well. All reflected changes in society, the need to get along, democratic values. SEL became important to PE, but it wasn't called SEL at that time. Next. Shape America in their content standards also included areas of SEL. Standard three achieves and maintains health enhancing level of physical fitness and physical activity is obviously about SEL in part. Students need to be able to assess themselves and make goals for themselves that are reasonable and appropriate. It's about achieving and maintaining a health enhancing level of fitness and physical activity. This needs self-awareness and the ability to set appropriate goals and programming for each of those goals. This obviously requires self-management skills. There are many social awareness and relationship skills that are required as well to be successful. These are important in our teaching and we've always strived to do them sometimes better than others, but the new emphasis I think will help us on our way. Next. Standard four is focused solely on social emotional development. It exhibits responsible personal and social behavior that reflects self and others. Can we understand and manage our emotions, set and achieve positive goals, feel and show empathy for others, establish and maintain positive relationships, make respectful decisions. Next slide. And standard five recognizes the value of physical activity for health, enjoyment, challenge, self-expression, and or social interaction is all about paying attention to our values and personal feelings. Next slide. One of the most obvious thing, ways that we've focused on SEL is through models such as Hellison's model for teaching physical and social responsibility probably the most famous curricular model in physical education literature for this area. Helson's model for developing social, physical and social responsibility is used in many schools. It was developed over 50 years ago. Next slide. Helson's model, he asked students, taught students to reflect on their own behavior and categorize it in one of six levels. Students were then taught to set goals for their behavior and monitor their actions through keeping reflective logs and discussing what was helpful to them in reaching higher levels. If you haven't studied and used this model, I encourage you to check it out. It's empowering. Next slide. Whether all areas of fitness need social emotional skills and empowering students is what we're all about. Next slide. All right, uh, this is Chuck back again. I'm gonna take over for a few slides here and talk a little bit about uh, fitness education and how it works with uh, uh, this whole scheme of SEL. Um, I'm just putting up the definition of fitness education frame from the fitness education framework. You can take a look at it. It's a subcomponent of PE, fitness education. It helps kids achieve knowledge and understanding of fitness, the product, and physical activity and other healthy lifestyles, a process that lead to health-related fitness, health and wellness for a lifetime. So uh, you, you ask, well, why are we talking about fitness education when we're talking about SEL? Well, as Dolly pointed out, physical education has been doing SEL long before there was an SEL model or a CASEL model. As a matter of fact, I'd say we do more than any other program in the school when physical, physical education is done really well. And fitness education as a subcomponent of physical education has played a significant role as well, as we'll talk about in a few seconds here. The uh, next slide shows that conceptual physical education is a type of physical education, fitness for life, for example, uh, at the high school, middle school is a fitness education program that uses a textbook, uses, a cla uses classroom sessions, and helps students maintain portfolios, either print or digital, uh, in order to uh, accomplish standards and, and fitness education benchmarks. It first started in college uh, in the 60s, 
and has become almost universal. 90% of college have a conceptual uh, physical education, personal fitness, fitness for life college uh, uh, course, and it has saved many requirements uh, in many colleges. In the high, uh, high school, secondary school, it's not as advanced. It first started in the late 70s, although it was in, in initially rejected, but now many states have adopted uh, conceptual, uh, personal, conceptual physical education, personal fitness, fitness for life type classes. And as we can see here, while the colleges are almost universal, uh, the standards-based physical education is getting close. The fitness education, including things like Physical Best, uh, CISPAP, um, uh, Fitness Gram, uh, higher level, and conceptual physical education, as this defined earlier, is uh, having a, a rising uh, thing, but not the level of saturation of the other. A typical plan at the high school for a conceptual or fitness for life type program would two, be two days a week in the classroom, uh, three days in activity for one semester, but the schedules are adaptable to change for a year for AB block, block plans. Middle school, it's uh, typically one day a week in the classroom, four days a week in activity for a semester, or it could be done on a nine weeks or a year long schedule. Uh, students read from the textbook and, and, uh, and do classroom sessions. Um, the widely adopted health philosophy guides us uh, health and healthy behaviors for everyone for a lifetime in a very personal way. This philosophy is common to Fitness for Life, Fitness Gram, and Physical Best. Uh, a goal is to move students from being dependent to a level of decision making through the stairway to lifetime fitness and wellness where ultimately they achieve autonomy or a level of independence through learning to self-assess, through learning concepts and principles, and primarily self-management skills. And that's what we wanna talk a little bit about today. A self-management skill, well, a skill is the ability to perform a specific task effectively that results from knowledge and practice. Uh, we teach skills every day, all day long. A self-management skill is a type of skill, so we don't only teach motor skills, we teach self-management skills. And in the fitness education, uh, fitness for life context, it's a skill that helps you adopt a healthy lifestyle style and throughout your life. So within fitness for life, as one type of conceptual fit, uh, physical education or fitness education program. We have classified self-management skills, which were developed long before the SEL model into self-management skills that help you think about change. For example, self-assessment, building self-confidence, building knowledge and understanding, improving self-perceptions, building positive attitudes. These are all embedded in the Fitness for Life program and scenarios such as the one that we'll describe in a minute are described for 21 different self-management skills, the first of which are those that help you think about change. Other skills help you make change, including setting goals, overcoming barriers, excuse me, hit the wrong button there, building self-confidence, sorry, that's not the right slide, Skills that help you make change, setting goals, overcoming barriers, managing time, improving performance, finding social support, managing competitive stress, and choosing good activities. All of these can be classified as uh, social emotional learning. And self-management, a primary component of the CASEL model. Um, these were developed in a different model, as I'm showing you now. And the final uh, list includes self-management skills that help you maintain change. So you can see this association to the, the uh, various uh, models uh, of social learning theory and others. These include conflict resolution, self-monitoring, 
preventing relapse, developing good tactics and strategies, learning to say no, learning to think success, that you can do it, thinking critically, and uh, including positive rather than negative self-talk. So these are the uh, skills, more than 21, because 21 are from the secondary high school program, and uh, nine are from the middle school program, including things like uh, communication, mindfulness, empathy, and so forth. All of these are social emotional skills. Now those, as were presented, are the way they're classified within the, the fitness education or the fitness for life model. The CASEL model, as you can see here, includes many of the same things, but they're just organized differently. Self-management, which we use as our umbrella term, is just one of five things here. Self-awareness, many of the self-awareness things are, are addressed through fitness education through self-management skills. So let's take a look. If you look at the uh, various self-management skills that I listed, many of them fall under the CASA model of self-awareness, self-assessment, self-monitoring, mindfulness, developing confidence, about yourself, learning about your fitness level, your skill level, your attitudes, your levels of stress, your posture, your health status. These are all self-management skills in the Fitness for Life model that builds self-awareness as described by Castle. Castle has self-management. Uh, that's a major umbrella term for fitness education, but this includes, for their model, things like setting smart goals, creating and developing plans, uh, managing time, overcoming barriers, thinking for success, thinking critical. These are all things from the fitness education model that fit well into the CASEL model uh, under self-management. Under social awareness and relationship skills, two other factors in the CASEL model includes things like the self-management skills of communication, conflict resolution, peer pressure, following rules, bullying, empathy, teamwork, leadership, and diversity. Responsible decision making uh, includes things from the Fitness for Life model, like critical thinking, self-planning, and follow-up planning, saying no, and strategy and tactics. So what I'm trying to show here is that physical education for years has done SEL. SEL came along and, and, and organizations have developed a really useful model to help schools in all subject matters develop social emotional learning. What we have here is a way of showing that what we've been doing, and if you do fitness education and fitness for life model, you will be building uh, these 20 plus self-management skills that address all of the components of the self SEL model. So for example, this is from Fitness for Life um, High School. There are other fitness education programs that address these issues. I choose to use this one because it's one that I'm familiar with. In this example, and throughout the uh, high school text and middle school text, scenarios are created with uh, hypothetical teens. In this case, Monica and Juana developed a plan to walk to school and their friend Miguel kept offering them a ride. Uh, after Miguel offered, Monica accepted, but Juana had, had the, a walk alone. So uh, they, got, they had some conflict. So the students read the scenario, then they have to answer in class or even online in, in discussion groups, what could the friends do to avoid the conflict? What steps should they take to resolve it? List possible solutions. Consider the skills uh, in the self-management feature they're addressed, which I'll show you in just a minute, but uh, worksheets are available uh, for students uh, to do these things. I just do want to point out as I go back, originally when we field tested these materials, we asked students to discuss their own problems that they had 
for conflict resolution. Guess what? They don't want to talk about that. But they're happy to give advice to other people. And in this case, discuss these questions in group settings. Then we provide, and the textbook provides, skills for conflict resolution that the students can look and study and use in their answers. For example, consider the three Bs. Remember to be calm, be patient, and be respectful. Communicate. Be willing to listen to what other person, the other person has to say. Watch what you say. Recognize that there is a conflict. Don't ignore it. Avoiding a conflict can cause it to get worse. Consider having a meeting with the, the rest of your group. Define the problem and restate it if necessary. List possible solutions. Consider options. Consider compromise. Seek the help of an outside party, like a teacher, a counselor, a parent. There are more details in the book. I just abstracted these for you. But the point is that in fitness education, in the Fitness for Life model, scenarios are used to promote the various things that I've described earlier under the list of self-management skills that meet the SEL model guidelines. Now, I'm going to turn it back over to Dolly, who's going to talk about a couple of other scenarios to give you a further idea of what this is all about. Thanks, Chuck. So here's another scenario. Um, comes from the middle school Fitness for Life text. Um, and I like this one particularly because it has several different aspects of communication and points out why communication is so important to all of us in our lives. So Selena had a really bad day. And any of us can relate to that. She got up in the morning and realized she hadn't cleaned her workout clothes. Her mother asked her, what's the problem? And she snapped at her. Never mind, it's not your problem. I, I'm actually pretty impressed that it, she doesn't see it as her mother's problem. But she went to school and found she, had, she wasn't prepared for an essay that was supposed to be turned in. And at lunch, a friend asked her to, whether she wanted to play hoops after school. Um, and she couldn't quite decide whether he was serious or not, so she decided not to go just because she didn't want to um, feel foolish. Well, what a day she had. She got home and just felt badly about things. Next slide. The students reading this scenario can think about these discussion questions, or you can make up your own, but these come along with it in the text. So what should she have said to her mom? What should she do next time to make sure that she meets her English teacher's expectations? Why do you think she wasn't sure whether Dante was sincere about asking about play basketball? What things could she do differently? Just hearing and thinking about these answers helps students, I think, have something in their head when an opportunity, when a situation does come up so they can deal with it in a more efficient manner and with the skills that they really need. Next slide. And again, as Chuck said, we want to give them the skills. So what communication skills do you need? Focusing on one thing at a time. In our multitasking world, it doesn't happen very often, but it sure is easier to get things right if you do focus on them. Writing things down and have, asking if you have questions. Getting the person's attention. Again, by having time when kids actually study these concepts, talk about them, it's much more likely that they're going to be able to develop in their own lives. Next slide. So one more example overcoming barriers. So problem solving, what do we do about things? This is about two students who wanted to go out um, hiking, but it was raining. So they had to figure out what about that. And they thought about the desire to be able to go to the athletic club like some of their friends, but the fact that they didn't have the right clothes to do that, and that made them feel like they, even if they could afford the club, they couldn't afford clothes to, to look good while they were exercising there. Again, common problems that kids do experience. Next slide. So. Again, an opportunity to have some discussion about these things, why they're not being active, what, what can they control themselves, and what can they not control, how to do something differently. Next slide. So giving them some skills to overcome barriers. Again, opportunities to actually practice these skills is really important, having them develop the skills that they need in order to be active in their lives. Next slide. Now, in the Fitness for Life textbooks, there are a whole series of these, as, as Chuck pointed out, other skills that kids need um, in order to become physically active for a lifetime. 
So here's a partial list. The next slide. And some of the ones that, that are becoming more active in, in the SEL curriculums these days um, are already again available in the Fitness for Life textbook. Stress management, mindfulness, stress reduction, empathy, community involvement, family par partnerships. And the additional activities that we have are take at home activities where students take some kind of a worksheet home and do it with their family. Um, so it's, my, it's about finding out about their own homes, um, what's available there for them in terms of physical activity, in terms of other people that might be supportive people on their team and helps them actually work through some of those things when, before they need it. We're gonna switch back to Chuck now. Alrighty, thank you, Dolly. Um, one of the things I wanted to emphasize and both of us want to emphasize that uh, these are just ideas uh, for you to use. And, and while the, there are many of these for the middle school and high school fitness for life program, you can create your own, you can have your own discussions. And these do uh, in times when people need online experiences, uh, uh, lend themselves to online learning and they're based on sound learning theory, uh, social learning, social cognitive theory, self-determination theory, health belief model, and stages of change model. When I was talking earlier about uh, the different self-management skills and how they help prepare you for how change, how they help you change, and how they help you maintain change, this really well into that stages of change model. Um, I do want to, Oh, I'm supposed to share, share, share my picture. Sorry, I didn't do that earlier. All right, so on we go. Um, let's just take a look at that for a moment. Social learning theory uh, centers around self-efficacy, self-motivation, intrinsic motivation, self-determination theory, uh, uh, critical is autonomy, independence, as they described in the Stairway to Lifetime Fitness. Intrinsic motivation, similar to that in social learning theory. The health police model says that uh, for, to, for behavior to change, people will believe that there's an unhealthy effect. If you don't exercise, you uh, put yourself at risk. If you don't eat well, you put yourself at risk. You have to believe that. If you don't believe smoking harms you, uh, you're not likely to change. Uh, but if you believe those things, change will help solve the problem. And intrinsic motivation or the belief that I can do it is critical to getting this done. Um, the stages change model says that change doesn't happen all at once. It changes in stages and people have relapses and move forward. And self-management skills such as those that we've been describing matter. Um, just briefly, I want to say that while this presentation is about social emotional learning, it's embedded within a quality physical education and fitness education program. And there is evidence that it works, that it has physical activity, knowledge, and attitude benefits. The results of the Project Active Teen Longitudinal Study suggest that CPE can be a vital part the total quality physical education program that promotes lifelong physical activity and complements quality physical education. Well, what is the Project Activity STEAM? It was a study started 24 years ago, and students were followed from when they were freshmen in high school until 20 years later, their 20th graduation uh, homecoming. And it was from Mountain Point High School in Phoenix, Arizona, where the study was done using the Fitness for Life model and text, and they're still using it. Um, just very briefly, uh, the people were studied when they were juniors and seniors, and we found that those who took CPE, the Fitness for Life model, were less likely to be inactive than traditional PE or national age group uh, matched peers. So, Two to three years after they took the course of freshmen, this is a published study that shows that it helps you be active. After graduation, again, same results. Those that took the CPE, conceptual physical education, were less likely to be inactive than traditional PE or uh, uh, age mass peers. 
and there was a fitness benefit for girls. And this is just for girls. I'm not going to repeat this for boys, but we had similar results. 20 years later, 20 years after graduation, actually 24 years since they took the course because they took it at freshman and they were in school for four years. Again, the people who took the class were much less likely to be inactive than the national um, matched peers. These would be 40 to 45 year old people. Uh, this would be boys or men, girls or women. And there was a moderate activity benefit for boys and a vigorous activity benefit for girls. So three studies in the PAT project show that uh, this type of approach works. Furthermore, 20 years later, those people, adults said, 56 said they remembered the class, 50% still use the information, 47 found the class useful after graduation, and 97% considered themselves to be well informed about fitness and physical activity and all significant differences favored CPE. There's other evidence uh, that middle school study and Journal of Teaching Physical Education that it works, the physical PE effect of Green, uh, Wong, Chen, and others, knowledge studies and attitude studies, and these can be found at the Fitness for Life web, uh, website if you're interested in more. I do want to address the physical activity question because sometimes when people talk about um, conceptual physical education or fitness for life or even online learning, which uh, during the corona crisis many people had to do, you have a, a physical activity question of, of if they're in the classroom, how, how are we going to be sure that they're getting the activity they need, especially when too many people are inactive? Our answer is that uh, fitness education, quality physical education is designed to teach people the overarching goal of, of standards and physical literacy is to promote physical activity for a lifetime. And if we can show, as the evidence does, that conceptual physical education, fitness education, makes people active years after they've taken classes in school, if you spend a little bit of time in the classroom making sure that it happens, it's well worth it. It's well worth it over the long haul. I'm going to turn it back to Dolly and she's going to summarize. So I get excited every time we talk about this. When you think about the, the self-management skills that can be developed through real effort, looking at them and thinking about them and having kids talk about them and practice them, um, it's a huge change and, and the data is there showing that it really makes a change in their lives. So in summary, social emotional learning empowers students, self-management particularly. Um, you can see how the self-management skills talked about in Fitness for Life um, context are cover all the areas of the CASEL model. Physical education has a long-standing social emotional learning component. We've been doing this for years, and getting better and better at it. We do more of it than anyone else in the curriculum. Our standards um, for physical education include SEL components. As we looked at standard three, four, and five in particular, how that's part of what we intend to teach and need for our students to develop. Conceptual physical education addresses SEL in a special way. The self-management thing of thinking about change, because that's what's really important, is that we change our behaviors um, and we develop the behaviors we want. So thinking about change as a center organizing principle is really important. But as Chuck showed, they can be divided up among the different S the castle um, areas as well. Conceptual physical education and social emotional learning support other areas of PE as well. So everything from being able to enjoy playing um, games and sports and the self-management skills needed for that are important. Conceptual physical education is effective in promoting lifelong physical activity. As Chuck showed with the research, um, it's not just that we think this, it actually has happened. And conceptual physical education ideas can be used in any quality program. So we've talked a little bit about Fitness for Life program here, and that's where we've gotten these examples from, but any good program um, can use, can develop the same kind of materials and have done that. So thinking about 
how you can get those materials either by making them yourself or by finding another program or by choosing fitness for life it's it's an exciting exciting adventure and hope hope you share with us your successes as well thanks for being here today we really enjoyed doing this presentation and hope to hear from you <laughs>